that good. Right there. Too close. <laughs> Not far enough. <laughs> Okay, knives. We like knives here and we offer a lot of sharpening services and I myself am a nice guy, knife guy. For your basic run-of-the-mill knives, we have Gerber. Nothing fancy about this. There's basically chunks of steel that have something resembling an edge on the side that you can use to whack stuff with. It has a nice little uh, holster for it or a sheath and uh, they're inexpensive. This knife is like 24 bucks. And uh, they come awfully dull, but again, if you buy a knife from me, we're gonna sharpen it for you to as fine of an edge that the steel can hold. Okay, the second coolest, this is a Thai Moon knife. They are high carbon steel, which means the edge that they, edge that they hold is very wicked. Um, but they're also thin, so it's very easy to touch them up. There's not a lot of work involved. Um, this is a chef's knife in a way. Um, you know, the rocking back, I'm not a cook, but you, know, you rock the knife back and forth and stuff gets cut. But um, the other cool thing about this is, is it's large and it's flat. And I've seen videos on uh, YouTube where people will actually take a knife like this and set it over an open fire and like grill stuff on it because they're just a all purpose, handy dandy knife. I really like this thing, mainly because the edge is just so wicked sharp on it from the factory. Then we get into cold steel. Now I don't know if anybody's familiar with cold steel, but I'm a big fan of cold steel. Now. Full disclaimer, I actually carry a Benchmade knife, but this thing is really expensive. Um, I like it, it's got fancy steels in it and yada yada yada, but it's expensive and there's no difference in functionality between this knife and let's say a cold steel Bush Ranger light because they do the same thing. So the awesome thing about cold steel is there's the highest quality that you can get with no frou-frou, nothing, no bull crap. Um, the, the, the edge, it's, in my personal opinion, slightly disproportionate, but it uh, doesn't matter. It cuts, you, and the locking mechanism, not only does it lock back, you can actually lock the lock back mechanism and get yourself um, essentially a fixed blade knife, not quite. Uh, you can baton with this all day long. You, you can take a, I've done it before with one of these, take a brick and a rock and just beat the crap out of it to baton through a, uh, some firewood, and it isn't, gonna, it isn't gonna mess with it at all. It's just solid and functional. Let's see here. Then we've got the Cold Steel Survivalist knife. Again, no bull crap at all. Comes with this nice little plastic sheath. Nothing fancy about it, but it does the job. It's got uh, 4116 steel, which is uh, high chromium and carbon at the same time. Basically, it holds a really, really wicked edge, but it's got enough carbon in it so that it makes one of these flints, flints work. Um, it comes from the factory actually really, really sharp for a cold steel knife. Um, it also comes with a little uh, compass in the bottom. Not particularly uh, convinced with the accuracy of these, but it's there if you need it. And uh, a whole host of random stuff. There's thread, there's, uh, I swear it looks like a whistle. Um, I... More thread, uh, fish hooks. Um, let's see here, and then down in here, some copper wire, maybe brass wire, not too sure, but you got plenty of wire for tying stuff together. Lots of handy stuff in here. And one thing I'd recommend when you're dealing with this knife right here is it does come with a flint, but the edge is really nice, and the only way for this flint to work out of the box is to use the uh, edge on the flint. The back is kind of rounded. So what I would do if I bought this knife is I would take a file, belt sander to the back, square it off um, so that it had a little bit of an edge to it, then you could use the back to operate the flint. So those are the functional things. Then we get to the really fun stuff. Cold steel machete. Again, absolutely no bull crap. The steel is stainless, but the high carbon stainless. Uh, the handle, it protects your knuckles like it's supposed to. Um, but it's nothing fancy. It's uh, poly, some sort of poly resin. Um, it feels like glass fiber, nylon reinforced or something like that. Um, 
Yeah, and they're inexpensive, and these <laughs> these things got some heft to them. So if you're really trying to clear some brush or anything, it's not going to take a lot of force to go through whatever you're trying to go through. Okay. If you really want to get fancy, we also have kukri machete. Now don't quote me on this, but I think they hail from India. Cool shape, very front end heavy. Um, you gotta lop something off with this. This will, this will lop her off. I, I really like these things. And again, cold steel style. No frou-frou, powder coated. Handle is textured, nothing fancy. It doesn't have wood inlays or anything like that. But it works in staging hand. Good stuff. We also have what Cold Steel calls a U.S. Special Forces survival shovel. Now, I'm not entirely too sure whether this was used by regular military or special forces, but either way, this thing is awesome. It's a shovel that's light enough to put on a carry pack, um, strap it all the way around. So, if you gotta whack something with this, it's probably gonna cut it off, and I guess you can dig a hole in it. So with any purchase of any blade that you get from here, we're going to sharpen, give you a coupon for one sharpening free. Um, you can redeem it when you buy it if you decide that the blade isn't uh, sharp enough out of the factory, and sometimes they're not. Uh, factories don't often put the kind of work into a blade necessary. Or you can just use the crap out of it, bang it up, bring it back to me later, and we'll put an edge on it. Probably better than what you bought it to. Thanks guys, hope to see you soon. <laughs> to occupy, to occupy? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>